Hey, what's up guys? While Bitcoin price stays more or less steady, in today's video I'll present to you a very bullish Bitcoin patterns that you have not seen before. Then we'll take a look at the other crypto news and charts. We know that to be consistently profitable as a trader is not easy, as emotions and high competition gets on the way. This is why I partner with Bitscap.com. Bitscap is an all-in-one crypto trading platform that lets you trade, portfolio manage, and most importantly give you access to bots trading. Further, it has integrated over 25 major exchanges including Binance, Bitfinex, Coinbase Pro, and many others. The bread and butter of this platform is automated trading. Asbot, for example, is a grid bot for sideways channels. The way it works, it buys assets in a green area and sells it in a red one a large number of times every hour. Functions such as trailing up moves the grid up when trend increases. On the flip side, trailing down does the opposite. There is a classic bot with a moderate risk reward profile and uses dollar cost average. Backtest for these bots is also available. There are three different price packages and right now you can get 7 days free pro package only with the link in the description box below. Guys, let's start today with the Bitcoin market. As of the time this recording, Bitcoin is trading slightly over 40,000 bucks. Market cap is at around $770 billion. Bitcoin is up like 3% of the week. Ethereum is looking really good. It's about $2,800 a coin. It's up by 7% of the week. By far, the best weekly performing asset in the top 10 listing. Just recently, I discovered some interesting patterns that you probably have not seen before. We know that in the first bull market run that took place in 2013, BTC generated 100x from the bottom to the top. But let's view this through a slightly different lens. Firstly, BTC increased from like $10 to above an average price of $100. That would be 10x. Then it waits sideways for quite some time and jumped from $100 to about $1,000. That would be another 10x. So we got two 10x's with a small break in between. Then bear market came around and Bitcoin dropped to about $200. That would be 80% drop or 0.2x multiple. In late 2016, another bull market kicked in. Firstly, BTC increased from like $200 to about $2,000. It took a small break and by the end of 2017, it made another 10x and topped at $20,000. Shortly, it went into the bear market once again. In that bear market, BTC dropped by another 80% or 0.2x multiple once again to below $4,000. Now, BTC has been fluctuating at around $40,000 for a while. It generated more than 10x so far from the bottom of 2018 bear market. Here is another interesting observation. Bitcoin generated 2x from the first top of $1,000 to the mid-2017 bull market price of $2,000. This time it also generated 2x from 2017 all-time high of $20,000 to this current price of $40,000. Back in 2017, BTC generated additional 10x from $2,000 price level to $20,000. So if the history has any meaning then we should see another leg up. 2x from here that will be over 80,000 bucks and 10x would put BTC over $400,000. Damn it, if you have 10 BTC then $400,000 a coin would be worth more than 4 million dollars. Yes, that is a lot of money. While this is all speculation and hypothetical thinking but in few years it might actually be the reality. In 2016 if BTC was only fluctuated a few hundred dollars no one could ever imagine that BTC could increase to $20,000 one year later. Similar scenario may play out in this market as well. Let's take a look at some quick news. Ukrainian President Zelensky signs a bill legalizing crypto industry in Ukraine. That's good, but they currently have a bigger fish to fry, and it's Russian tuna. Cryptocurrency will soon be legal asset class in Ukraine thanks to the new bill signed into the law by Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky. Ukrainian Ministry of Digital Transformation tweeted today that both foreign and Ukrainian cryptocurrency exchanges are cleared to operate in the country. Crypto companies will soon be able to open accounts in Ukrainian banks as well. After the war, hopefully Ukraine will become something similar to El Salvador. The signing of this law by the president is another important step towards bringing the crypto sector out of the shadow to launch an illegal market for virtual assets in Ukraine. Nice to see that Ukraine is trying to embrace Bitcoin. Here is a funny meme. Me keeping my egg in one basket. If you have Bitcoin then diversification is not needed. 
but if you have shit coins, that's a totally different ball game. Will Bitcoin hold $40,000 support level? It looks like it's struggling, but let's wait and see what happens. Here are the top companies that hold Bitcoin on their balance sheets. Marathon is on the fifth place. They purchased 188 million worth of BTC back in 2020, and today's value is more than $353 million worth of BTC. Well done. On the second spot, we have Jack Dorsey's company Square. They bought $220 million worth of BTC, and now it's more than $350 million bucks. On the third spot, we have Terra, a blockchain platform that specializes in a stable coin minting, bought more than $1 billion worth of BTC. We do not know exactly when they bought it, but Terra founders plans to obtain $10 billion BTC for reserves. That would be actually quite helpful for the company and Bitcoin as well. On the fourth spot, we have Elon Musk and his company Tesla. Tesla bought $1.5 billion worth of BTC in late 2020. Soon after that, BTC skyrocketed. I remember that moment very vividly. Now it's worth slightly less than $1.9 billion. Still pretty good. By far, currently the biggest company that owns Bitcoin is MicroStrategy. They started buying Bitcoin in mid-2020. So far they spent $3.88 billion on BTC. In today's value, that would be over 5.44 billion bucks. How much do you think $3.88 billion from 2020 would be worth in today's money? Significantly less. Therefore, any company that has extra cash on their balance sheets should consider buying Bitcoin. Otherwise, the holding melting ice cube. Here is an interesting chart. It represents the exchange Bitcoin net position change. The exchange net position change is the indicator measures whether there is an inflow or outflow of BTC in accounts linked to exchanges. During the market cycle bottom, there is usually a large outflow from such accounts, since holders purchase coins and transfer them to cold storage. The outflow is represented by these red bars. On the other hand side, there is usually an inflow during the significant price rally as long-term holders take profits. The inflow represents in these green bars. During the first major pullback where BTC dropped by 55% in mid-2021, we saw a major inflow of BTC into cryptocurrency exchanges as investors were selling. However, during this drop we did not see that huge inflow as in previous drop. Bitcoin outflow that is in red bars is usually bullish as we see that in between August and October 2021, where BTC increased from $30,000 to 60000 bucks. Now we see another outflow patterns formation. This could be another sign that the second leg up could be just around the corner. Here is another very interesting chart. This chart compares this current Bitcoin market to the previous two cycles. These blue dots represent a number of new all-time highs in each cycle. In the first and second cycles, there was in between 60 to 70 new all-time highs. But in this bull market we had only 30, more than twice slower compared to the historic bull markets. The majority of all-time highs took place in the first half of 2021. Only two all-time highs took place in the second half, where BTC increased above $64,000 and topped at $69,000. box. It may also tell us that this Bitcoin market is different. This cycle generated less rate of returns, but at the same time, it did not drop as much as the previous two. It seems like volatility slightly decreases, unless the time proves us otherwise. Now, let's take a look at this quick video from Mike Nongratz, where he talks about current Bitcoin market and its functions as a store of value. Let's take a look. My, it, it, you see adoptions coming and, you know, five years, you think it could trade much higher. What, that would be, you know, a, a 10 bag or at least maybe even uh, yeah. more. So part of that is where I travel, I see people wanting to buy. Why isn't it going well, it, up right now? It's going to be transactional then? You're going to, because no, people I don't. still say they're not, you're, not, you're never going to use Bitcoin for transactions. It's always going to be digital gold because it, it's too volatile and, it's ne and it, it doesn't fit the, the smell test for using it as a currency. You think it eventually will be a currency? I don't think it'll be a currency. I think it will be a store of value. Okay. I think there'll be other, like, listen, Ethereum is already trading like a currency, right? It's the currency of culture. When people buy NFTs, they say, how, how many ETH do it cost? Oh, it was one ETH. It was three ETH. Uh, and so... I think you're going to have this world where we have opt-in communities. Like people are opting into the Bitcoin community. There, are, there are literally more people that own Bitcoin that live in than live in Russia. It's the eighth largest country in the world by by participants. Uh, they freely opted in and said, "We believe in this ethos of this community, which is a hard money way to store our wealth." And I think that will gain momentum as trust continues to break down. 
listen, if Jay Powell and Janet Yellen can can get our economy back to 2% inflation and have our debt come back because growth is so high and we go from 140 debt to GDP to 70, Americans won't have to buy Bitcoin, um, right? But if you're in Russia, you feel pretty stupid having all your money in ruble. Or if you were in Turkey, you feel pretty stupid having all your money in, in the Turkish lira. And so when there is bad stewardship of economies, which our stewardship has not been great, let's make no bones about it, uh, Bitcoin provides a great alternative for people to just store their money. Um, Mike, what, what, you saw the executive order, right? Did that do anything for, for crypto? It, it, it made the crypto com companies like ours <sighs> breathe a sigh of relief, right? We were worried that Warren was going to have so much influence that it was going to be really anti our industry. And what they said is, hey, we see this as a burgeoning industry and we want to have regulation that makes sense. And our first real focus is stable coins, and it should be. Stable coins, digital, central bank digital currencies is a national security issue. We're behind China, and how we construct our stable coin says everything about who we are as a country. We can do it China-wise and give up all our privacy, or we can do it the way Brian Brooks, who was the head of the OCC, suggested, and keep privacy, right? Your bank doesn't tell the government what you buy, right? Your credit card company doesn't tell the government what you buy, nor should a central bank issued digital currency tell the government what you buy. And so it's a big, big deal. According to Mike Novogratz, 10 better is coming, but Bitcoin will not be mean of exchange just like currently US dollar is. Bitcoin will be more like a store of value similar to gold. I agree with that idea, but Bitcoin is so much bigger than gold. Let me know what you guys think. Will Bitcoin be a store of value or mean of exchange? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Smash that like button and subscribe for more videos.